Houdini 19 has brought a ton of cool new features, and a lot of those are in the Solaris context. So I wanted to take a look at how we can build assets for the asset gallery. So to start off here, I just have an asset from Megascan. So if you want to get this, it is the tufted grass or tuft grass, however you pronounce it, um, asset in Megascan. So look for that and you can follow along exactly how I do. So to start off here, uh, if I take a look at the graph here, this is kind of the, the basic setup right here. And then we can build assets, export them, and then we can use them, just reference as USD assets, come in with all the materials and everything. And if you look, if I switch over to Redshift, everything is actually set up for Redshift as well. So we can set up everything in this graph to work with any render engine that you choose. And that is super, super cool. So how we actually go about doing that is through the component builder. So let's go ahead and drop in a component builder node and that will bring in a four node node tree. And just a couple things here, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this material library. I've duplicated this one over here just to save us a little bit of time and got rid of the shader at work. So we're gonna just rebuild all that. So to start off here, let's go ahead and just set the display flag here. And actually let's go to our component geometry and let's copy this file node and go back out to this and we'll just paste that in here. So if I set the display flag here, you can see that our asset is huge. So like I said, it is set up from mega scans. So the scale is all off. Let's go ahead and drop in a transform here. Wire that up. And if we bring in some test geometry just to set up our scene, give us some scale, I'll use Tommy here as a baseline. Drop in a merge and just wire both those up. And let's go ahead, take a look here. It's not showing him, at least doesn't look like it's showing him. That's because this grass is so large. So let's set this down to 0.01 maybe. And now you can see that we have our grass more in line with actual size of grass. And just a, a quick note here, I would like to just point out that my recommendation for setting up assets is actually to create a scene where you're going to look dev and create all of your assets with lighting and everything so that you can just have a consistent look to any assets that you're creating, which I ha actually have not gone about doing yet. Uh, but I do plan on doing that here in, in the future and that way it'll give you a consistent look across any assets that you build and when you bring them in you know what you're you're going to get inside of your other scenes. So just a little side note there but just because I saw what it was in the other one I do know that 003 is going to be more in line with what I'm looking for for the size of this gra uh, grass. So I can go ahead and delete these two there. So. I should have touched on this to start off with. We do have three outputs here. So we have our first output, which is going to be what the um, object is actually gonna render as. And then we have our proxy geometry. So this is gonna be what it's gonna look like in, a, in the viewport. So we wanna create a lower res version of this asset and pipe that into the proxy here. And then this third one will be the sim proxy, which we're not actually going to use in this video. So let's go ahead and set up our proxy geometry. So we'll use a poly reduce. We'll just wire that up and just make sure that the normals are all good, which they should be. But just in case anything gets screwed up and we want to drop this down to something like 10%. So if we look at our geometry here, it has 5,700 polygons, which is pretty dense. But once we drop this down to 10%, you see now that we only have 574. And it still gives us a pretty good idea of what we got going on here. So if I just bypass that, you can see that the shape really doesn't change all that much, but it does give us a lot better look at, uh, or a lot better viewport performance once we are going to be duplicating this a lot. So definitely want to poly reduce that down. Just choose something that's gonna give you the basic shape and a good idea of what it's gonna look like. So let's go ahead and jump out here. And I do have a material library here. This is going to be where we're gonna build our materials. This will set up the materials on our asset. 
and then inside of this will be where we actually export stuff. So let's just go ahead and set this back to Houdini GL for now and jump into our material library. And you can see, like I said, I still have some stuff in here from the previous material that was already set up, but I got rid of the shader work. So these first top nodes are going to be material X because we're gonna set up a Karma shader as well as a Redshift shader. So Karma, if you don't know, at least the XPU version of Karma is completely built around the material X uh, material shader network. So you wanna use only stuff that is material X for Karma. And that is anything in here. If I go to material X, any of these nodes in here, you don't wanna use normal, like multiply is gonna be one that you use quite often. So there's a multiply here, which we use in the old um, mantra shader, but we have these material X and that's actually what we're gonna want to use going forward. Then I also have some notes down here. This is gonna be the redshift side of things. So let's go ahead and set up the material X. So we're gonna do material X standard surface. And if we wire in our albedo, and then we wanna do the AO into the second multiply, and we'll pipe that into the base color. The Next one here is roughness. So let's just pipe that into specular roughness. And then our third one, actually not gonna use this. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. That's translucency. Just adds a little bit of render time that I don't really want right now. So this opacity, we'll do geometry opacity. And then the last one here is the normal. So we do need a second node here. So material, if you type in MTL, bring up all your material X stuff. And then we want the material X normal map and we'll just pipe that into the N and the out to the normal. And then the magic node that's gonna make uh, the viewport here switch between shaders based on whichever render delegate you have or hydro delegate you have set is gonna be this collect node. So we wanna pipe this into here and if you go ahead and just look over here in our scene graph, this is gonna be your USD scene graph. You can see that I now have two materials here, which we don't necessarily want. Just clean things up a little bit here. We'll go ahead and just unselect that as the material output, and we'll just keep this collect node. Let's go ahead and call this tufted grass shader. And we should be all set up for Karma. So if I go ahead and switch over to Karma here, you're gonna see it switches over to the high poly version and we have our grass with all of our textures on it, which is awesome. But let's go ahead and set that back to GL for now. And then I have done a little bit with the redshift stuff here. So just the albedo and the AO here and using an RS color layer because I can get a little bit better control here. And then I'm also giving some color correction just to give it a little bit nicer look. I think it's a little bit too bright, the textures anyways, for, for my taste. So you can actually go in and edit all this later. We'll go over that here in a little bit. But if I drop in a RS material builder, just dive into that network and you see that we have this material node as well as this Redshift USD material. So everything in the Solaris context is USD. So we will want to bring that node along. So let's go ahead and delete that now and then we'll go to RS material. And then we'll also do USD, Redshift, USD material. And then I'll just pipe that in there and twirl that down a little bit. So we'll pipe our out color into the diffuse color. And then this one is roughness. So we'll just put that into where are we at the reflection roughness and this one should be opacity yep and we'll pipe that into overall opacity color we'll just scroll that down and then our bump map if you don't know you need to put them into a bump map node make sure you change this to either tangent or object space depending on what you're using make sure it's default to height field so you want to change that to a normal if you're using a normal map and then we'll plug that plug that into the bump map and like I said before, we wanna just deselect these material out um, flags because we don't wanna use those as materials. 
and we'll wire this into our grass shader. Now, if you wanted to add displacement, you would also need to add that in there as well. I believe there should be, yep, displacement in here. So you'd wanna wire that up, but this isn't gonna use any displacement. And now if we hop out of here, we can set Redshift as our render now. And you see that we have a pretty consistent look here between Karma and Redshift. It's a, a little bit different between the two just because of the little processing that I did on the Redshift side of things. But overall, I think this looks pretty solid and I'm gonna be using Redshift uh, for most of my uh, assets, so most of my rendering. So I want to just have what I, I want to look the best on the Redshift side of things. So play a part here in a second. If I go and click on this component output, now like I said, I do recommend creating a scene that you're going to use to light and look dev all of your assets because it'll make things a lot easier and you can transfer all your assets to a new library, um, which I'll look at here. I have a little library in our hit file. It's going to have our outputs of stuff. So we'll output that here in just a second. So to actually do that, you want to obviously you want to save your scene and then we want to give this node right here a name so we'll just call this grass since i've already output this with what i like i'm going to just name it something different and then we want to twirl down this thumbnail we're going to actually create a thumbnail for this as well so once you're ready you want to look to your camera which where is, where we go, view thumbnail camera. And then you can set this just however you want it. And I forgot to lock it. So we'll set this however we want it to give a good look to our asset so that when we view the thumbnail in our asset library, you can actually see what it's going to look like or give us a pretty good idea here. So this should be pretty solid. So if you want to use the viewport render, so that would be Houdini GL, I think, uh, then you can do that. Or actually, sorry, use Houdini GL. This is what it's gonna look like. Obviously don't wanna do that. I'm gonna use render, and then you can choose between whichever one you want. So I'm gonna use Karma. I set this back to Karma. This is what it will look like once it's fully done rendering. That's what it'll look like. If I want to use Redshift, which is what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna set that to Redshift, and we're gonna go ahead, save this to disk first. And you see that if I bring up our asset gallery scene here, if I go into our assets, see we have this new folder that's created with grass. It's missing the thumbnail. Let's go ahead and generate that now. I'm gonna click that button. It's gonna bring up some stuff in the Houdini console. It's gonna go through everything because Redshift is using OCIO and ACES uh, 2.0. It's gonna be going through and making sure that everything's converted and everything's working properly. And once it's done, it will uh, un kind of gray out that thumbnail and then you'll see that we have our thumbnail in here you can see that is what it will show up like in our gallery which is pretty solid render so that's kind of the basics of that once you have that all exported you can bring it back in with a file node and if i just frame this up here this isn't working too well there we go so if I frame this up here, you see we have our grass. Now what happens if we want to actually change our material because we made some, let's actually switch over to Redshift. We made some changes that we didn't like and we wanna maybe brighten this back up. So the way that we're gonna go about doing that is using an edit material network uh, lap, whatever you wanna call it. And then we'll set that display flag there. There's nothing in here by default, and that's because we need to set our material. So we can just twirl this down, go down to our material, select this collect, which I should have renamed in my actual export here, but I didn't. And once we do that, we can click this load. It'll take a second. You see, we get some information here, and we can dive in there, and our shader network is brought up here. So we can go into, let's say this color correct node, we can now check this saturation scale and let's set that to something like two or four just to give us something super uh, different than what we see in our viewport here. And now that's giving our updates. So if I have this unchecked, 
it's not actually going to change anything. If you recheck it, you can get the changes that you've made. Now, if you don't want the changes to um, be what they what you've put in here, and you want to reset them back to what you have as far as I or what you had, I, as far as I know, there is no way to do that. If you revert this back to defaults, you can control and middle click. It sets it back to the defaults of the actual node, not actually what it was brought in as, which kind of sucks. I don't really like that, but it is what it is, I guess. You just keep that unchecked and you should be good. But yeah, you can go through and completely change your materials, get them to look however you want. If you decide you don't like the changes that you made, just go through and deselect all those settings and you're right back to where you started with what you brought in. And obviously you can just re-delete this node and, and re-add it if you uh, wanna really start fresh. So that's a quick overview of how to create nodes or create a USD assets for the, the asset gallery. And if you wanna bring up your asset gallery, you can actually set this to Solaris and then layout asset gallery and you can bring them in. We're gonna go over that here in another video but that's how you're gonna go about doing it. We're gonna go over all of the new features of the asset gallery because it is awesome for world building. There's a ton of cool stuff that you can do with it. You can scatter stuff all across your uh, scene with a lot more ease than you used to inside of the object context with a lot more control. Uh, it's a ton of fun to play around with. So like I said, we're gonna be going over that and some other cool stuff with Solaris. So stay tuned for all that. But I do have some other videos on my channel that go over Redshift and Houdini. I also have some stuff on Octane, Cinema 4D, and Clarice as well. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you check that out. Also, make sure you don't you subscribe so you don't miss any of these upcoming upcoming videos on Houdini. I will probably be diving into more Solaris stuff and how it all works inside of that as well, because it is a little bit confusing. But once you get going in it, it's not too bad. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.